Evelyn Saga part two. Got a flight lesson today. And this isn't actually my first one after the video that you guys just saw. I've had about, I don't know, two or three hours flying and landings are getting easier. Even this crosswind landing in Marion wasn't, I mean, it wasn't smooth, but it wasn't scary. Takeoffs are still sketch, but getting better. Now, as much as this plane is moving around, something was up with my takeoffs. So today we have a 6 to 8 knot crosswind, which before in the Bonanza I wouldn't even take note of. Like, oh, okay, we got a crosswind. Um, in this, I, I think it'll make for some good training. So I'm gonna set up the cameras, get the plane pre-flighted, and we'll go flying. So to really get to the root of these weird takeoffs, I installed a crotch cam. Basically a GoPro aimed at the um, control stick. And unfortunately you can't see rudder pedals, but that, it turns out, isn't really needed. So let's check out the first takeoff of the day. Uh, we thought we had a left crosswind. We ended up not having a crosswind, but it's, it's still important to see. gesturing and what went wrong and what could have happened. So let's look at it in slow motion. Notice left crosswind control being applied now, which is too late. But then as I push the stick forward, I'm actually taking out the crosswind control again. And then for some reason, all of a sudden, I'm banking right and pulling back on the stick, which then induces this mess of a takeoff. And you can see we end up all over the place until finally and mercifully the airplane gets in the air and takes off on its own. So why, why am I doing that? Let's look at this takeoff one more time. This time I want you to focus on the turn coordinator. So the ball in the middle means we're going straight. Um, here's what you're looking at. When that ball goes to the right, it means the airplane's turning left. So when we raise the tail, plane wants to go left, ball goes to the right. Instead of responding with just right rudder or adequate right rudder, for some reason, I'm still trying to fix that problem with aileron. So I'm yanking the stick to the right, pulling back, which turns out is the source of our problems here. So we've pretty well confirmed that I'm causing the problem. The airplane is just doing what I told it to do. Now let's check out uh, the first landing of the day. I've become a fan of three-point landings. Um, I also overlaid the speedometer, so you and I both can see how fast these landings are going. This first one, um, we thought we were just too fast because I made a three-point landing, the airplane bounced, and then um, it landed again in the three-point attitude without too much um, drama. But Initially, we thought we were too fast. It turns out we were actually pretty well on speed, so I just didn't arrest the sink rate enough, and that's why we bounced. Um, Ryan is explaining that if you do bounce, you want to keep that stick back um, so you don't porpoise or, or do something else funny. So that was our uh, that was our first landing of the day. Being that I uh, struggle with takeoffs, we did a full stop taxi back. And here we go again for takeoff number two. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the chart of the equation. Yeah. yeah. Now like, oh, why did the left wing lift? Because I had made it. I told it to. Alright. So after that realization that I am in fact the source of my flying problems here, we attempt takeoff number two. Watch the ball, because that will show you the left turning tendency of the airplane, especially when I raise the tail. Again, there's the aileron control, but that takeoff wasn't bad. I was a little more aggressive with the rudder, um, applying more pressure, and more or less it kept the airplane going down the center line. Now the wings weren't quite level, but we weren't all over the place, so this was a much better takeoff. Then the next landing coming in again, um, 
The first few landings, I was trying to get very creative with my pattern shapes. I was trying to fly a half circle, final base uh, leg or, or downwind to final. So I was coming in consistently a bit fast and I had to do some slipping to reduce speed. But here we come in over the numbers right at 60, which this plane seems to like. Getting it lined up and kind of a bumpy touchdown. The wing wanted to lift up again, which I correctly lowered the wing with the aileron and applied rudder at the same time. The thing with this airplane is it loves adverse yaw. So if you're going down the runway and you lift a wing for some reason, um, you're also introducing adverse yaw, which means if I raise the left wing, the airplane wants the yaw to the right. So you see that as we lift the wing, there's a little bit of right yaw as well. So it's really important to create these pathways in your brain. If you move the stick left, kick in some left rudder as well, um, or else you're going to be chasing your adverse yaw, and especially if you're trying to fix that with aileron, you just end up in a loop and not a ground loop, just a PIO, a pilot-induced oscillation loop that gets hard to get out of until you're actually in the air. So next landing, let's see what we got going here. So this landing also came in a bit too high, um, again because I'm not patterning it very well. If you look at the ball, you see how it's pointing to the left, that's because I'm applying right rudder, dropping the left wing and doing a slip. It increases the drag, uh, which allows you to descend without picking up too much speed. At some point, obviously, you have to straighten out, out of the slip, so that's what happens here. And So the interesting thing with this landing, watch my hand as we bounce. So you see how my hand is pushing forward and back, forward and back? In a responsive airplane like this, that forward and back, you know, that's not without consequence. Um, we just kind of loop, or kind of induce this oscillation that just makes the bouncing worse. So that was also really interesting to see. That's that's a problem you don't usually have with a yoke. Um, the yoke resists that kind of movement a little bit more. Other than flying the side stick on a Cirrus, I've never flown anything with a stick before. And, and it also shows you why you really need to pull that stick all the way back once you land. So here's our next takeoff. You gotta keep in mind, at this point, I'm convinced that I'm not moving the stick and that the left wing keeps picking itself up for some mysterious reason. But look, see my hand there? Still moving the stick. I'm responding with rudder, but I'm still moving that stick. And at 40 to 50 miles an hour, that airplane's going fast enough for that to actually do something. So I really need to focus on not moving the stick unless I really need to move the stick. See there, we're discussing, why is that wing picking up? Thanks to the crotch cam, now we know. It's me. Now we also ended up switching fuel tanks because we were burning off the left fuel tank initially, but reviewing the footage afterwards, it's plain as day. It's me, I move the stick, the airplane does exactly as I tell it to. Now here's an uneventful landing. Um, but when I add power again, instead of turning off the carb heat, I accidentally turn off the master switch too. But I caught on and undid that. Luckily, this is a simple airplane, so it wasn't really a big deal. Um, on takeoff, again, that left wing went up, and I could have sworn I wasn't doing anything here. So let's let's rewind, look very closely, see what happens. So. Watch the ball, ball goes to the right, I respond a little late, and if anything, my hand actually goes to the left while I apply rudder, so I don't know why the wing went up that time. Um, I'm just going to chalk that one up to it being a really old airplane, and maybe it's not rigged 100% straight. I don't know, we'll see. 
at least I was able to stop it and, and you know allow the takeoff to continue safely. The next landing was pretty uneventful and the next takeoff was starting to become pretty uneventful as well. Left wing picks up a little bit but for the most part I'm staying within a couple of feet of the center line which is significantly better than my first takeoff. Also definitely better than my second takeoff. This is probably the worst one yet. Both of these, they're in uh, part one of the Luscombe Saga where I bought this plane and flew it back from Albuquerque with an instructor, so if you want to check out that story, check out part one, or episode one, or I don't know, the other Luskin video. But anyway, back to the lessons. Here is another landing, mostly unremarkable except the left wing lifted up again. Um, I correctly used aileron and rudder this time to fix that problem. You see left wing goes up, push left, but I also added left rudder there so we didn't reason. have adverse yeah. yell. Yeah, I didn't think rudder was going to fix That was a good takeoff. At this point, um, feeling pretty confident, and we're like, let's shake it up and try wheel landings. briefing the landing there basically we want to touch with minimum downward velocity so uh, the tail doesn't get pushed down by itself as we're coming down ironically this approach is pretty well on speed um, and what ends up happening is I just end up making a three-point landing For the next attempt, line up again, a little bit faster on this approach, which in theory should help. However, Ryan also told me that if we start bouncing, it's best to just go around. Here's the bounce, here's the bounce, and we go around. So on our third attempt here, I think it was more of a wheel landing than the other two, but it wasn't great. I really wish I had a GoPro set up on the wing looking at the airplane so we could see what kind of uh, attitude this touched down in. Um, yeah, I honestly just don't remember exactly what happened there. sun was starting to get pretty low and we had a pretty good run so here's the last takeoff landing of the evening. Ryan is gesturing at my hand um, just to be clear and how it's bouncing with the airplane really something that I need to get used to, maybe try bracing my hand on my knee a little bit um, to be more aware of how my hand is moving while the airplane is bouncing. 
There's the final landing. It wasn't the greaser I had hoped it would be, but I'll take it. Thanks for watching. I'm glad I recorded the first few flights I did in this plane because they were so bad. Um, I'm infinitely more confident in it. I, I still got a ways to go and I really need some good crosswind days to practice those because I've really only had maybe two crosswind landings so far. So when that time comes, I'll put up another video and we'll see you on that one. Thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Leave a comment if you got some tips and tricks or if you see something um, that isn't as excellent as it could be that I'm not aware of yet. Thanks. Bye.